the message of reconciliation, the restoration to faith. Now, if you ask me, if you want my opinion, this is where you might have dropped the ball a little bit when he gave it to us because we haven't done that. We have not told people that. But that's what we're supposed to tell people. You know, we're a little bit afraid to tell people that for some reason, but I think it's good. You know why it's important to tell people? Because if it ever dawns on us, or anybody, that I have been restored to favor with God, that God is on my side, that He's not mad at me, that He's not holding anything against me, He has put me in a position of righteousness before Him, then it's more, let's just say it this way, it's easier for me to act and behave if I, in that way if I believe that's really who I am. Generally, our doing follows who we believe we are. That's very really true. Okay, King James, next verse. Let's go back to King James, get the next verse. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, and in other words, in his place, be ye reconciled to God. In other words, he's reconciled himself to you. What are you waiting for? Be reconciled to him. That's the whole thing. He's done it already. Now this part, I think the church is good about telling people you need to get right with God. And that's what people... But you know, I don't think it's fair to say you need to get right with God unless you first say He's already gotten right with you. Because that's what Paul said. He's already gotten right with us. Now, all that to get to verse 21. Verse 21 sums it up this way. For He, and the first He means God, for He hath made Him, that's Christ, to be, notice that language, to be sin for us on our behalf who knew no sin, that is to say, he knew no sin, but God made him to be sin, that we might be made, made, the righteousness of God in him. Now, there's two things that God did in terms of state of being. First one is he made him to be sin for us. Now, that's such a horrifying and a shocking thought that many people, many Christians draw back from that. Well, a lot of people, what a lot of Christians say is, no, Christ on the cross was just in a legal way sort of standing in. That's not really true. This says that he made him to be sin. You know, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in chapter 3 of John, he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, I don't know about how you feel about Bible symbolism, but the serpent doesn't symbolize anything good, does it? The serpent never does portray in, in the Bible uh, something good. In the garden, it was the it was Satan, and it, and it represents sin. And this it goes perfectly along with this. It says he was made to be sin for us. Did you know that in the garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus cried out to God and, and sweat great drops of uh, blood, it said of sweat like blood, uh, and he and he called on God uh, earnestly and said, "If there's any way, if there's any way, let this cup pass from me." Remember that, and and, and re earnestly, you know sweating and, and, and agony about that. If there's any way, let this cup pass from... It was not that he was afraid to die. He was not afraid of death. He wasn't afraid of a physical, even a painful death. What he was drawing back from was being made to be sin. But he knew it was necessary for us. Now, it's important to see it that way. I think it's important to see that he was made to be sin for us by the grace of God so that you can also see that on the other side of the equation, it said he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, so that we, in the same way, might be made to be the righteousness of God. A, right, a rightness. This is the same sense in which God, uh, uh, Paul used it in Romans chapter 1 that we read about. For therein in the gospel is revealed a righteousness out from God. We might be made righteousness and it came from God and it's in Him. In the same way that Jesus was made to be our sin on the cross and then He cried out, My God, My God, why have You forsaken Me? He entered down to, into our condition completely. In that same way, we have been made to be made to... See, made the word made, does that again apply creator? It does. Something that was made uh, creator was required here. We are made to be that. It's, it, he knows it, and it's us that don't know it. But what would happen if we know that? You know that we're supposed to know that. Look at it quickly in Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm just about done. Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 22. I know we've read this before too. But just because we've read it before doesn't mean we can't read it again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. Notice what Paul writes to the Ephesians. Now this is good. 
this is practical, I think. He says that you put off concerning the former conversation, and there he means manner of life. The old English word conversation doesn't mean talk, it means the way you live in relation to others. That you put off concerning the former manner of life, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. That's our old life, who we used to be. He says, put it off. Everybody sort of instinctively knows that, but how do you do it? Here he tells you in verse 23. Notice what he says. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, what does that mean? Well, what goes on in your mind? You were just telling us before, weren't you? Yeah, but uh, lay aside. So, you know what goes on in our mind all day long? Thinking. <laughs> we are thinking about things. And uh, what I like to say sometimes is your mind's not a vacuum. Although that I'm challenged uh, sometimes with the college students. I mean, sometimes I doubt. I've, some of them I think it might be actually be a vacuum. But no, really, our mind is not a vacuum. Something's going on there all the time. Is that right? Yeah. I heard a man say, uh, I was listening to a, person, a particular person uh, talk about this, and he said, you know, people think about meditation, and they think, you know, I ought to be meditating on, on certain things. And he said, you know, the reality is we are meditating all day long. Trouble is most people, everybody meditates all day long. Everybody does. Trouble is most people, all they meditate on is money and how to get more of it. <laughs> but we are thinking all day long. We are meditating all day long. Our minds are active. When we're asleep, did you know when you're asleep, your mind is still active? You ever had a dream? You know, when you wake up, you sometimes remember what's the, the tail end of what's going on. But you know, your mind is active all the time. It's made to be that way. But Paul here says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How could you say that a little differently? Think differently. Adopt a new way of thinking. Uh, how should I, what should I think differently? Verse 24. And that you put on the new man. Now why did he say, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and immediately say, put on the new man, which after God... Did you know the phrase, after God, means like God? In his likeness is created. You notice the word created again? Created. That implies the creator. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That like, that you put on the new man, which like, in God's image, like God is created, notice, in righteousness. Created in righteousness and true holiness. You see, what he's saying is, put on, uh, he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Adopt a new way of thinking, and here's what you should think. Put on, where do you put him on? In your thinking. It's not a carnal thing. You don't put on the new man like you put on a shirt or put on a jacket. You put him on here by deliberately thinking that way. I am this new person, the new man, the new creation. I am that. Which, like God, created in righteousness. You notice he doesn't say... Uh, after a while, when you've done enough good things, uh, you might achieve a state of righteousness. He starts us off that way. He said he's created us, created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, if we do that, if we do what he says and begin to think differently, and notice this thinking differently is primarily about who we be, who we are, our being. I am that new person. You know, if you think about yourself as that new person, in the likeness and image of God, in righteousness and true holiness, and you understand that it's not something we did or we are trying to do, and somehow if I do enough things, I'll get there. We are that already. He made us that way. It's a lot easier to behave and act in accordance with who you really believe you be than it is to try to get there if you think you're not there. Because if you think you're not there and you're going to try to do things to get there, you never can quite get there. <laughs> And so your whole time is spent trying to get somewhere, which the ironic thing is you're trying to get somewhere that you already are. Yeah. Now notice, all these things we've read, he's not telling us to do anything but to believe something, to think about ourselves in a certain way. Now after we've thought about ourselves in that certain way, then we begin to act in accordance with who we are. And, and by the way, that's if you go on reading here, that's what exactly he says in the next few verses. He starts describing, if you believe that's who you are and that's who God has made us to be, and that's what he's just got through telling us, and you renew your, change your spirit of your mind, he just begins giving 